Streaming isn't hard, but it is a lot of work. I got five tips for you to help you start streaming in 2022. Let's go. Before we get started guys, if you find this information helpful in any way at the end of the video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, hit that bell so you guys get notified next time we do post another video like this, or next time I go live. Which by the way, we do go live right here on YouTube every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. All right, let's get started. Okay, so this isn't gonna be the sickest or, or coolest uh, stuff that you need to, to start streaming. This is kind of going to be a list to uh, to help you get the ball rolling, so to speak. The first thing you're going to need that is probably the most important thing, in my opinion, would be to have good internet. So the process of streaming is taking your content or any kind of media and uploading it to the internet uh, for others to see. The key word in that is uploading. Now, based on what you're streaming at or the kind of content that you're producing, it requires a certain resolution to be encoded and uploaded to these streaming software sites. So the easiest way to check what your upload speed is to go to Google, type in speed test, and it'll give you a brief rundown of your download speed and your upload speed. Like I said before, the key thing you're gonna wanna look at is your upload speed. Basic 1080, uh, 60 frames per second stream is going to require roughly six to nine thousand kilobytes per second or six to nine megabytes per second and also depending on the streaming platform you decide to use you're going to be capped at the resolution that you're going to be streaming at so that'll play a big factor as well one of the biggest problems you're going to have if you don't have good internet is you're going to encounter encoding issues now that'll make your stream look laggy, it'll be pixelated, and a lot of people watching don't really wanna experience that kind of stuff. So once you do start setting things up, make sure you have the right upload speed for the right resolution that you wanna stream at. Otherwise, it's not gonna be enjoyable. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to think of is what you're gonna to wanna to stream off of. You got your PC and you got your console. Those are pretty much the two things that you can stream off of. Console is a little bit easier, you know, uh, I streamed off an Xbox when I first started. All I had to do was click go live and that was it. The other option, I guess it's kind of a middle option, is you can still stream from your console, but via capture card through your PC. And the third option would to be streaming directly from your PC. The last two things require a little bit more work and a little bit more setup in order to make it work. Which brings us to our next point is the hardware. Now, I don't want to tell you what you need to buy and because honestly, you don't have to spend that much to be a good streamer. But in my opinion, there are two things that are probably the most important pieces of hardware that any streamer should have in their arsenal. That's a camera and a mic. There's lots of cameras that you can choose out there. You can get a mirrorless or a DSLR, but it, honestly, the best option for you would be to use a basic webcam. Now, I've been streaming off my webcam, my Logitech C920 for the last two years. And with a little bit of movie magic, you can make things look pretty good. If you have the right lighting and if you adjust your settings properly in OBS, you can make it look pretty good. The other big thing would be your microphone. And again, you don't have to spend a crazy amount of money on a microphone. A majority of them now are a USB type of mic, meaning that you can literally just plug it into your computer and it'll work. Granted, there's a lot of other things that you can use in your streaming setup, like a stream deck, extra monitor, or a nicer camera to make things go a lot smoother. Uh, if you guys want me to go into more hardware stuff, let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to do a video for you guys. The next thing isn't hardware, but it's probably the most important thing. And that would be the software that you use, your OBS. What your OBS software will do is it allow it to encode your stream and upload it to whatever streaming website you decide to use. It'll also allow you to connect those peripheral devices, those hardware devices that you have. It allows you to uh, set up overlays and alerts, things like that to make the uh, viewer of your stream 
uh, have a little bit more fun. Now there's a few software companies that you guys can go through. The two big ones are Streamlabs and Stream Elements. And Streamlabs likes to use a more basic, easy to use kind of plug and play type of interface that you can that you can use. Where Stream Elements likes to work together with another software called OBS Studio. Stream Elements website allows you to go in and customize your overlay settings. Uh, allows you to customize your alerts and other things too. When I first started streaming, I did start on Streamlabs. It was super easy to use. It didn't have to do much Googling on how to use things. It was a very click and go type of, type of software to use. But once I started learning how to make my own overlays, make my own alerts and stuff, I then did switch to Stream Elements and OBS Studio so that I could customize my stuff and, you know, make it a little bit more personal for, for my style. There's a lot of things you can do with OBS and it's really awesome. And if that is something that you guys wanna see in the future, let me know in the comments down below. Okay, so you got your internet, you've decided to stream on your PC, you decided to buy a mic and a camera, and you got it all set up on OBS. So the next big question you gotta ask yourself is where do you wanna stream to? Personally, I started on Twitch. Twitch was a great platform, it has a great community, uh, easy to use user interface and it allows your viewers to be engaged. They've got bits, emotes, things that you can do to, to keep your viewers engaged. But recently I've made the switch to YouTube. YouTube isn't as um, interactive, let's say, compared to Twitch. Each one of these streaming platforms does have pros and cons to. My biggest advice to you is do your research. I can't sit here and tell you to stream on this one or that one. That is based on my opinion and what I've learned throughout the years. So do your research. Be sure to check out the terms of service of each one as well. So there you have it guys. There's five tips to help you start streaming in 2022. Listen, have fun with it. Experiment, go crazy, enjoy the process, okay? Try new things and maybe, you know what? Don't limit yourself to just one streaming platform. Try streaming on all three. Have fun with it guys. Until next time, I will talk to you guys soon.